<laughs> it actually worked. Um, unfortunately, no effectful transition to black before we switch scenes. But hi, everyone. We are live. We did not crash, which means that everyone is going to die. That's just how it goes. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh, you didn't get the memo? <clears throat> anyway, yeah, welcome. We're fighting. <laughs> Sorry? I was just saying, yeah, we're fighting a dragon. This... Oh, yeah. That's true. Oh, boy. That's true. And it's not going to be quite as cinematic, or maybe it will, as last time. So, welcome everyone to Changing the Lost, the Littlebrook Reunion. I was going to say Redemption, but not yet. Um, a uh, Changeling the Lost 2nd Edition game that we've been running for a month and a half now, I think. Even longer. And as usual, I'm Chris, or the Primogen on YouTube, and twi Twitter, and Twitch. And with me, as always, we have... Uh, should I say who starts, or should we just? You should say who starts this time. Yeah. All right, we'll start with Nate this time. Hi, I'm Harry. I play Nate, and I am a Ferris. Brilliant. We'll go down to Silas. There, I'm Trev, uh, and I play Silas, who is an ogre. Perfect. Thank you. We go to Nova. I, um, I'm Megan. I play Nova, and I'm a beast. Yes, uh, Lars. I am the Turing, and I play Lars the Wizened. Thank you very much. And above Lars is Tide. I am Kitsu, and I play Tide. Hello. <laughs> it's an elemental. <laughs> and last but not least, Jonas. Hello, I'm Adam, and I play Jonas the Darkling. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, everyone's playing a different um, seeming. Yes. Yes. Seeming. Yep. Yes. And uh, that's that was a happy little coincidence that we just ran with. And um, in case you missed the last couple of episodes, everything up to episode four is available on my YouTube channel, which you can check out in glorious 1080p. If you become a subscriber for the Onyx Path, you will be able to watch everything, of course. And if you are a patron of mine, you will be able to see a week later in 1080p. So there's a two-week 
backlog thing for YouTube, one week for Patreon, and you can watch everything as often as you want if you uh, subscribe on Twitch. Uh, there is a uh, Mummy 2nd Edition Kickstarter going on right now. And I do believe it got funded in a day, which is pretty amazing. Awesome. And it is, uh, from what I've gathered, I think I mentioned this last stream, it is some kind of combination of the Mummy movies as well as Ocean's Eleven. You can essentially, it has a non-linear non -linear time structure, so you can wake up in 2019 and then go back in time and form a cult dedicated to you <laughs> and affect the future. It sounds pretty dope, to be honest. So go check that out. It should be linked in the chat every now and then. I think there's a bot uh, bringing that up. And um, I think that's the only Kickstarter that's running right now. Otherwise, I'm sure that uh, that I will be reminded about it during the stream. Now, for a little bit of a recap before we start. In the last episode, everyone had met up with the principal, Mrs. Blackbird, who had... Um, essentially called for a meeting with the city council of changelings and attending this meeting is of course most of the team here and uh with the exception of jonas who went with matthew and amanda to go check out the wooden bridge matthew and amanda being previous citizens of lilbrook um, matthew being the librarian and amanda being <coughs> cobbler a cobbler a shoemaker uh, as the group went there, there was one person missing, of course, and that was uh, Lars, who had uh, gone away with uh, Patty, the uh, deputy police officer, dep deputy sheriff, and also another changeling. And he had gone to visit the grave of his wife and his fetch, because they lived, they, they were buried in the same grave, same plot. Uh, Lars had a solemn moment. Um, talking to his uh, his wife, trying to make sense of things, but was interrupted by the arrival of another member of the family, his son. Thankfully, Lars managed to run away and hide. And I think Oma is meowing in the background. She's, yeah, she's yeah, scared. Yeah, of course she is. She's upset that we're in different rooms. Uh, regardless, Lars felt it was not the appropriate time to reconvene with his elderly son and instead decided to head back to the meeting at the meeting uh, the group encountered two other citizens of Lilbrook the uh, slimy or perhaps I should say inky uh, inkwell the local news reporter slash um, columnist slash editor slash owner of the Lilbrook Herald as well as Jim a ogre uh, who uh, had Perhaps slightly less to say than Inkwell, but he supplied the group with backpacks, which he had collected and put together. And the backpacks included all the essentials you would require for an adventure into the forest, including uh, blankets and stuffed animals. Or, yes, I guess that's what you call them. The meeting was called, and um, as the discussion was going on, Mrs. Blackbird received a text from Matthew, informing her that the dragon was presumably heading towards a spot up in the woods, uh, a, patch, a, f a patch of field or a patch of grass in the middle of the forest with two wrecked cars in it, a common place for Jonas and his friends to visit back when he was still human. This place would also be the entrance to um, an underground tunnel system leading to the place where Another citizen of Lilbrook uh, had been remaining for the last 17 years, powering the contract, so to speak, that kept the city uh, out of Hedge's way. Uh, this changeling was Wenceslas, the uh, husband of Mrs. Blackbird, as well as the painter of a, of a painting of the green of the city back in the late 50s, I believe. Uh, unfortunately, the changelings of Lilbrook could not actually go there to get rid of the dragon, as they had all sacrificed a part of themselves to bind the contract. And they feared that if they went, then perhaps these uh, icons, as they were, would find their way back to their owners and the uh, contract would be dissolved. So 
Conveniently, perhaps, the only ones who could deal with the dragon would be the party itself. Big surprise there. Uh, after some rather irate questioning, it, the group decided to at least try to deal with this large purple reptilian threat and were given a cold iron sword to wield against it, as cold iron is one of the few things that is utterly deadly to anything from fairy or fey. And I do believe... Uh, I. Wunderschlaus. <laughs> no, um, Wenceslas, the uh, good king, Wenceslas. I do believe that's where we ended it. Remind me if I missed anything from last episode. Sorry? I think that was it. All right, thank you. I am having a little trouble with some connections, but hopefully that's going on right now. Discord is being Discord. So if there's any issues with the audio, just let us know and we'll try to work it out. Tech happens, as you know. But all right, I do believe that is everything for now. So if everyone's ready, we can start telling a story about Beautiful Madness. A storytelling game of Beautiful Madness, even. We'll start with Jonas. Jonas, you didn't go with the others to these... To the principal's no to the uh, city hall after the principal's office you instead went off to meet with matthew and amanda and together you traveled to the wooden bridge the covered bridge also known as the old bridge of town which is where the old road went before they built a highway next to the city this is where you came out in what feels like quite possibly a month and a half ago but it's only been a day and uh, as you get out of the car, Matthew, he's kind of wrapped up. He's uh, clearly, he's, pr he's a pretty thin man. So he's wrapped up with this big scarf and a uh, long coat. And he's got his hands shoved, in, hands shoved into his pockets. Amanda doesn't seem to be bothered that much by the cold. So she's still walking around in her almost comically red and green uh, outfit. And honestly, it's August. So it's pretty far away from Christmas. So it's clashing even more. Why don't you describe how you look, Jonas? Because it's been a while since we did that. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm wearing some makeshift clothes from the from the thrift shop, uh, like a jeans and a, a hoodie primarily. Um, but otherwise, Jonas' face is completely blank. Basically, no no features, no eyes, no mouth, no nose, and and quite pale, almost like like a doll. Thank you very much. Uh, Matthew, as you remember, is um, a tall, gaunt man who is covered head to toe in writing all over his body. He looks like if someone essentially um, cellophane writing on top of him. So there's uh, all different kinds of languages. There's Arabic, there's Japanese, there's American, English, well, English, uh, French, Swedish, everything, really. And... Um, he, his skin kind of looks like brittle paper as well. And cool. Amanda has this kind of elfin features, um, very similar actually to some of the party's keeper. Some of you had the same keeper, kind of an elfish looking woman, very thin, angular features, black, pitch black eyes, uh, pointy ears, some long flowing hair. Amanda looks like that, but she certainly doesn't look like a queen like the keeper did. Matthew walks over to the bridge and he... Um, kind of takes his, uh, his hand out of his pocket and pulls up a glove and st kind of starts uh, touching the wood, uh, inspecting, running his fingers across the, uh, the uh, rusty nails, checking it out, every now and then kind of stepping away when a car drives past. But it's the middle of the day, so there's not that much traffic going on. While... I, I ask him while he examines, like, is there anything in particular you, you're looking for that I can, I can help me with? Like, I, I don't know what, what, what we're looking for, but... Well, that's... Um, you want to... uh, I've never encountered something like this before, so it would be any sort of um, any sort of signs of glamour being used. Uh, it usually leaves a little bit of a residue behind it, um, and that's really what I'm looking for. Any kind of glamour contracts being used, uh, some manner of spell being cast... If you have any ability to sense it yourself, that would be appreciated. But 
Right now, I'm not really sensing anything. I, I'll have to keep I, looking. I have uh, a merit that's called Eye for the Strange, mm -hmm. which basically lets me, if uh, if there's something supernatural that happened on this scene, I, I notice it. Ah, okay. Well, you do actually notice, as you're looking around, that there is... It's hard, to, it's hard to place. You feel like there is a residual energy left behind, but you're not sure if, from what. It could possibly be from you or the dragon or even the gate that opened, but it's located only here. It's like a very, very thin, like a two-dimensional veil uh, in front of this gate, and it's fading as you're, as you're feeling it. It's so faint that it's... It's like a very, very slight change of pressure in the air around there. Like when you get closer, you kind of feel it in your sinuses almost. That's the point. The the world is not quite right here. I, I don't know what it is, but it's like it's like doors closing or something disappearing, something that's overlapping. I, I I'm not sure, but yeah, something is not quite right here. Yes, I, I see. But it's fading. Um, Amanda, do you do you sense this as well? And she she kind of looks over and she, she, she strains a little bit. It's like no, no, I I don't. It seems I, I I can't sense anything. And and Matthew goes, no, I really don't sense it either. Uh, are you sure you're sensing this kind of disturbance? I, what, can you describe I, I, it? I I don't know if I'm sensing. It's just I, I've seen. I, I know when the world, I usually can notice when the world is real and when it's not, if that makes sense. And, mm. and right now it's not completely real here, but it's mm. getting more real as we speak. I, I don't know. It's just like, not a sensation, but something like tingling in the back of my neck mm. that, that tells me that not everything is as it, as it should be That's right here. That's interesting rather troubling since I'm not sensing anything at all. Do you, do you sense it anywhere, anywhere else, or is it just on this door, on this gate? I, uh, this is, this is basically first time when I, first time I've seen it. It, it looks like something, like something is just off, like from the from the other place, from Arcadia. Mm. I would guess. I don't know um, if there if there's any other powers in in motion around here, but. That that's what I'm guessing. I I'm sorry. I don't know no, if no, I no, can. That's quite all right. Uh, I I wasn't expecting you to to uh, solve the mystery. You've just recently escaped out of Arcadia, after all. He he, he goes up to the um, to the uh, entrance, and he traces it as much as he can with his hand to see if anything happens. He takes out a piece of crayon and he draws on it as well, and he looks more and more. Frustrated. Okay, someone is making weird, some weird noises going on. Okay, um, he looks more and more frustrated as he really can't seem to figure it out. And he goes, "You don't sense any kind of presence from the dragon. Nothing like that. No." I I don't know how how to sense a dragon or or nothing like that really. Well, I'm sorry. We we do know that a dragon's here. That's that's been established. Um, but I'm. Are you saying that this energy is becoming more prevalent? And no, you're you're not. It it's the same. I'm, I'm saying. It's it's something, and it's like two, two forces overlapping, mm. and but it's getting weaker. I don't know if that's like since we got through here that something opened up, or if it's your that that spell or or curse that you were talking about. That's fading. I don't know how to well, how to tell. It is quite likely that there's something relating to that, but if it, if it's not becoming stronger, that's a relief at least because risking the uh, risking the hedge to gain access to our city again would be very problematic. I believe. Do Do you know which direction the dragon flew towards? Yeah, I I point at mm -hmm. the direction. Well, I shall have to return to this spot later on. Maybe perhaps at the time when you all arrived, it could have something to do with the face of the moon or the time of the day. But for now, we shall continue our investigation. The dragon would yeah. take precedence, I believe. 
What what were you testing? Well, how how were you? Some manners, what were you looking for? Some manners of opening a gate, perhaps. I've uh, I've encountered gates before, portals that you can mm. open by reciting rhymes or ancient contracts or drawing something okay. out on them. But I don't believe this is a gate. I would have sensed it much earlier if that was the case. Okay. Uh, and you're sure you came out of this entrance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, right. We we stumble out on the street right here. One last experiment. Amanda, do you think you can cross to the other side and go through? And she gives him a look like... You want me to... You want me to try to go through the... He's like, yes, well, it's probably not going to hurt you. She looks very skeptical, but... Why, why can't... Why can't he? Why can't he do it? She points at points at you. Well, anyone can do it, I suppose. It's really not a matter of who, but you do have your talent for getting across the water. She, she kind of. Well, as long as no one's watching, I guess. And she kind of looks around, and uh, she braces herself, and. You, Jonas, realize this is exactly the ability that Silas was using back in Arcadia. She just throws herself into the air. There's like there's, there's no movie kind of uh, boom going on or, or, or the trees bending. She just suddenly soars through the air and she lands perfectly har unharmed on the other side of the river. Which is a good, I would say, at this point... 50 feet across, perhaps? Uh, maybe f 40 to 50 feet across. And she kind of waves over to you. I wave back. A bit confused, but yeah. All right, so let's try to... Actually, Jonas, do you think you can get to the other side as well? It would be interesting to observe what happens when she walks through the, through the tunnel. Uh, yes, um, I'll, I won't be, I won't, it's just, it's harmless, right? Well, it should be, I believe that. And as you're talking, another car drives by, and you don't know what it was that made you look, but you just glanced at the driver, and you immediately recognize the face. It's been 18 years, but there is no way absolutely no way that you would forget the face of Allison. She drives by, keeps on driving, and the car comes up to the strip mall, slows down, heads into the parking lot, and she, she steps outside. I notice myself standing and staring, and then I, I turn my head away and put my, my hood up. And just give a quick look and yeah yeah i'll, I'll cross i'll cross right. and start crossing through well do you have any abilities to get across uh, oh it's across the water yes i suppose I, I mean you can wade through the water but it's rather cold uh no i don't have any I abilities I can, I can swim but i'd rather not if let's just watch let's just watch and observe for now um, uh, or from this side, I suppose. All right, you can. You, yeah. He motions for Amanda to to walk through, and uh, she starts heading through. And you're watching from this side. Nothing. She comes through. Nothing. No change at all in the the things you're sensing. Oh, did you did you feel anything different? Some kind of reaction? No. no right. Nothing. Nothing. I, hmm. Suddenly, what what are the yeah. what could possibly have gone wrong here? What what you had a contract that nothing or a deal or a, or a spell that nothing could enter and nothing could leave. Not quite. We could leave. Uh, changelings could leave. We can go in and out of the wall. We essentially blocked out the hedge, which means that yeah. within this. I guess you would call it the bowl or the, uh, the hemisphere. Hemisphere? Not hemisphere, right? Correct. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, within this hemisphere, there there is no hedge. There's no connection to Arcadia or to the hedge. Outside of it, uh, the connection is severely weakened for several kilometers or miles until you reach a point where the hedge returns. But seeing as there is no collection of people living that close to the city, the we have no reported accidents of changeling coming out of the hedge over there as well. I believe there might be one or two returns changelings in Fargo and quite a lot more in Minneapolis, but not quite the same amount here in in Littlebrook as, as here in Littlebrook. Much, much. But more. but there was a peak in in abductions like twenty years ago and twenty years before that, and now we're. We're reaching another yes, like yes, recall, twenty years from that. I recall the theory, and I do believe, I do believe it's relevant to this. So perhaps we should. And as he's talking, you see suddenly how um, Amanda, who's who's just been listening, she starts mumbling. Uh, she she starts kind of shaking. Um, it's like forest trees. What? What? Underground. She's like, it's like she's watching something going on and Matthew looks over to her and, oh, alright Amanda, um, he, he, he kind of digs in his pocket and takes out a little notebook um, alright, this is, uh, this is this is very good, this is very good um, could you could you hold her, she's having um, she's, it's, it's, it's um, I, I go and hold her Yeah, she, she's kind of sh- like shaking all over and her, her, her eyes are rolled up um, and she goes what's, what's underground, then says less and as soon as she says that name, Matthew kind of just goes, right, this is this is not good. This is not good. Uh, he, he digs out his phone and he starts typing a text. Not good at all. Not good. This is last. I have to tell uh, Mrs. Blackburn. Oh, dear. What's going on? What, what is well, happening? Um, I, I will tell you in a second. Uh, sorry, uh, Jonas. Uh, no, no worries. We'll take, um, send your text. Mrs. Black- right. So, um, this is... Exactly what I did not want to happen. He finishes the text. Okay, all right. We we have to go. Um, we will return to the um, to the city hall. There is. Did the principal tell you about Wenceslas? No. I will tell you. On the what, way. what is that? I will tell you on the way. He just Correct. kind of half runs over. Just bring Amanda with you, and she's she's still kind of I'll, shaking. I'll I'm try. I I guess she's a lot stronger than than I am, but I'll I'll, I'll do my. Uh, Amanda, she's she's very thin, so you you bring her along. I I uh, confused her with Patty. Sorry. Oh no. Okay. Now um, Amanda is just kind of kind of still shaking and and twitching and mumbling words, but uh, Wenceslas is repeated every now and then. You can you can definitely hear that, and. Um, as you drive to meet up with the others, he explains to you about how one of the... Is someone... Okay, there's some weird noise going on with the microphone. Um, he explains to you that there was another citizen of Littlebrook, um, Wenceslas, who sacrificed himself, essentially served as the conduct for the... conduit for the, uh, the contract to work, and that this was done 17 years ago, and he is essentially... Like at the uh, at the very middle of this contract, this this dem- hemisphere, and if the dragon is going for that, which he presumes because um, Amanda's prone to having visions, he explains to you, uh, uncontrollable ones. Uh, well, it's a it's it's a there's a rather lot of glamour in in that location, and being a creature of fae, I would presume that dragon would be interested in feeding over this energy and if he does then the contract will surely be broken See. i he, he looks at his phone your friends have agreed to deal with this situation as it were i'm assuming you would be fine with going with them are hoping such is the case i can assure you that there is no way for us to deal with this unless we wish to endanger the contract itself. If the dragon has been consuming the energy of the contract, then that really doesn't matter. So we will be preparing ourselves as well. But for now, hopefully you can reach Wenceslas before the dragon does. I am not... Uh, uh, sorry? What, what, 
while we're just going in the car and going in, I'm trying to just maybe even if it means like I try to listen to him in the beginning, but then I also like try to see if I can see Alison and just see what what's anything like I can find. Does she, do I see like a, a kid's chair in in the in the car or a, she uh, she's or, come she's come out of the store uh, holding a big bag of uh, cat food. And she's she's on her phone and she's she's looking uh she's looking like she's holding back a lot of anger like she's typing something on her phone and her face is in a scowl um and you remember of course that your fetch the one you met that night uh is married and in the process of a divorce with allison so presumably it could be related to that you're not sure but yeah. she certainly doesn't look happy um, I'll make a mental note of it, and then I'll I'll focus back to to Matthias. Like, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. And, and okay, so yes. the dragon is feeding, perhaps, it maybe, could, or drawn could. to this 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 thing, person, citizen. You said Wednesday citizen. Uh, another uh, one of our yeah. uh, of our group. Yes, um, he he essentially volunteered to be the conduit for the spell. Hopefully he, he should still be alive, uh, although I'm not aware of in what condition he could be in. Um, it is imperative okay. that you stop the dragon, because we have no idea what I, I, Of course, I see, I see. Yes. Yeah, I'll, uh, I, I don't know what I can help with, but I'll, I'll, I'll help if need be. Uh, sure. Very well. Uh, he, he drives you up, and, and you arrive to the, uh, the end of this forest path for, for vehicles like this forest road and you spot the others waiting there as well they all have a backpack similar backpack on their shoulders and they're ready to go and you are all rejoined in group. Patty's right. pointing into the woods it's about a 5 to 10 minute trek up in that direction should be um, should be a fairly straightforward walk think um there's no um no there's no snow so there's that has any one of you been to the the cars before yeah, yeah I, know I, I know the way all right we'll be in contact you all have your cell phones the prepaid ones i give jonas his <laughs> backpack there's stuff in here for you Thanks. I'll look into it. What what's in the That's backpack? A good question. Let's look what's in the backpack. There, oh, there are several items. Let's see here. There are these little heat packets that you can just snap, and they start warming up. Then you can, uh, if if it's cold outside, there's a blanket. Yours is white with um, ant patterns on it. So a bunch of ants all over the blanket. There is a survival guide. There is a map of the forest. There is a cell phone. Um, not not as complex as the ones you've been seeing around town. There are two emergency flares. There's a portable stove. There is a pretty big bag of trail mix, a flashlight, and a sleeping bag. And a stuffed teddy bear that kind of looks like an ant. If you squint. <laughs> You see, Patty and uh, Matthew are talking, and he's like, "No, no signs of." I suppose he sent something, but we'll have to discuss it further later on. Silas tries to pick up one of the cell phones and take a look at it. This is the first time he's ever handled one of these things. It doesn't even look like the phones of the 1960s, touch tone uh, landlines being warm in the 80s and yeah. 70s, matter than anything. It's so he looks trying to see if he can turn the phone on at least by pushing the yeah. power button. You press it and um, you get a startup screen, which is like this little film going on on the screen of this device you're carrying. And it's uh, two hands going together and grabbing each other. And there's text coming up saying, connecting people. Oh my God. <laughs> the old Nokia stuff. <laughs> And uh, 
there's a display. There's some bunch of little black dots, and there's a, a bar up in the corner, and there's a 99%. And uh, it looks like a like you can't really tell what it looks like. It uh, the symbols are all foreign to me, even the name. I ask, where is Nokia? Is that, that like is, a company? That's just the makers of the phone. It's like a company. I think yeah. it's uh, Norwegian, says Patty. Silas looks at that in shock. The Norwegians made this? Or the I mean, Swedes, I'm not saying, I like, don't know. Some, some I, Scandinavian. I mean, not... Didn't yeah. Finnish people make this? I don't remember. Maybe no. Finnish. I don't know. Some, it's Scandinavian, I know. I'm like, wow, that's really impressive. If they can make these. I mean, Erica should have flying cars right now or something like that. <laughs> no. Well, it's neat. I think there's flying cars, but they're really? like planes instead. It's it's not. Oh. You don't need wheels when you're in the air. But look, come here, come here, I'll show you. <laughs> the I'm, not, comes I'm not that old, but then I don't know what the planes of today look like. So, yeah, just show me what these little symbols mean. Oh. And this, this little thing here that says 99, that means how much ba battery you have. So okay. you want to turn it on unless you need it, because otherwise it's going to go off. Although this is a Nokia, so usually, you know, they last a week, so we should be fine. Um, um, if if you want to call somebody, you just start typing the number, but we have the number in the phone already saved. So so this is a smart walkie-talkie, you said? You used it? You know yeah. what that is? So you press this button, <laughs> like it's a button on the side, I don't know which model it is. You press this button, and then you, this, is, this button goes up and down, see? Can I like the your name, finger press, fit? Try. I like the name, press the button. Uh, I try using my huge fingers. I can definitely feel it pressing more than one button on the side. And I think, hmm. Okay, maybe if listen. I got something small, like a little pencil or something, to push the buttons for. Oh, you, I don't know if we have a pencil. Uh, I can make you a deputy, pencil. The deputy pulls a pencil out. So you, you can have this, Silas. It's a very small pencil, the kind you would use to take notes on a notepad. But more importantly, it has uh, a small end that can be used to push the buttons without a problem. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, and then you just see this this name here. I think this is the name we are allowed. To, we should call if something happens, right? I look at Patty. It's like the first thing in the. In the... Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's our number. Yeah. Some of the so buttons you, are big enough for some. So you to press grab. this, you press this green thing, and then it starts calling. So you put it to your to your uh, ear. Green means call. Got it. Yeah, I'm. It's gonna say calling on the screen. I mean, I can press. <laughs> I can press some of the buttons, but some of the others are so small that I'm surprised anyone can get them. Man, I should not be hired by any kind of this company. I'm not really good at explaining this, am I? I mean, considering that I didn't know what it was until until today, then I think you're doing pretty well. So don't worry about that. I'm going to stick with you anyway, so I can help you, because you're carrying my water, so... Well, thank you. While they're you're talking... You're welcome. <laughs> While while they're talking, I'm I'm scooting over to Lars and just like points to that teddy bear and just what why why do I get a did you also get a, a stuffed animal why did we get that you're I think you're muted I don't hear your microphone do you hear me yep uh, yeah but uh, yeah. Lars is. Nope, it's being weird. I think it might be um, not plugged in properly. Sorry. Uh, hold on. Oh, there we go. 
No, it works in the test. Yeah, no, you're working. You're working fine. Does it work now? We okay. hear you. Yes. Apparently needed to be kicked over, but um, so I'll uh, pull my stuffed animal out, which I don't remember which one I had. I didn't jot it down. Uh, Say, so, oh yeah, we all. Which what you want? Okay. Um, so yeah, we we all got one. The um, the I guess you would call him a gentleman who packed them is a larger more stone version of Silas. And um, okay. he didn't seem like he was fully developed up uh, here. Okay. So so there is no like... Okay. I, great. Uh, thank you. Yeah. But apparently there's cars that we can strip and use for parts, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, if we're going up to the cars, yep, there, I, I know the way. Good. That will let you take the lead. Okay, sure, sure. I'll, I'll look over at Silas and Tide, are they <laughs> still instructing each other? Probably, sort of, but like ready to walk if we have to, I and think. This, and this is Snake. It's a very fun game you can play. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we lost Silas. <laughs> uh, how is uh, how is how is um, Nova and La how how are Nova and Lars dealing with these devices? Um, Nova hasn't really been paying attention to it because she's very focused on what they're doing now. She's like, she'll figure it out later. She's right in front of everybody. Yeah. Why does she have to figure this out? That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. I'm in the same boat. Oh, Nate. Yeah. Sorry. 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 <laughs> That's wrong. Yeah. You guys are just like, yeah, let's go. We'll figure it out. We got a job to do. Yeah. yeah. Can, can figure can out the Nova's, phones later. Can Nova see Matthew and Amanda? Amanda's sitting in the car. She's kind of, she's looking a little bit out of it. Like she's, she's staring off into the distance. And Matthew was talking to Patty. He's outside the car. Yeah. Okay. No, and, Nova's noticed that, but she doesn't know if this is like the time to deal with that. She's keeping it, keeping an eye on Amanda. Yeah. Can't trust that elf. <laughs> well, she's, Meanwhile, she's yeah. ready to throw down. Meanwhile, Silas is completely hypnotized by the screen. He's playing Snake, and for someone who just found out what it is, he's doing a really good job instantly grabbing the app and figuring out not to run into, not for the head, to run into the body. He's actually pretty quick at getting the snake to move, but the sheer transfixed expression on his face as he realized how powerful this phone is, it's an order of magnitude above anything he's ever seen before in the 50 years of Arcadia and before that, even before that. See, this is crazy good. This is do this is really good. See, you're getting really good at figuring out which buttons to press. But I think we're yeah. going to go now. You're going to be okay with it now? Oh, don't, yeah. don't, don't play too much on it because, see, the battery has gone down a little bit. So, oh, maybe oh, okay. you can, yeah, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, that turn was, it off. Was... Turn it off here on the side. Silas immediately uh, turns the, the game off and puts the phone in the pocket. Uh, so, okay, sorry. Let's. Uh, I'll just put this in my backpack. Unslings the very, relatively large backpack from his shoulder. He takes a brief look at it, considers it compared to the others. His backpack seems larger. Little, a little bit more prepared. Almost like they had something ready for him specifically, or at least someone very much like him. He resolves to ask Jim about it when the next game change. All right. It's this, called uh, adjustable straps. <laughs> this way. Lars follows. And the Jonas starts like walking to to the cars. Mm hmm. Um, the walk is is, is certainly easy. Uh, there's still some frost here, every especially amongst the trees because the sunlight doesn't get to it that well. 
and the sky is this usual kind of cloudy gray. It's so cloudy that you can't actually see the outlines of the clouds. It's just a gray sky. Um, there's some light breaking through. Well, obviously, since it's it's still daytime. And you, you get to the field, and almost right away, you see, um, you see signs that there has been something here. In the middle of this grass field, there is this completely round circle of burnt grass. Sorry. Um, it is complete. It's like a perfect circle of black and charred uh, grass. And the rest of the grass is almost to, up to your knees. So it's very, very distinct. And you spot the two uh, broken down vehicles further down, uh, further across this field. I carefully start going toward the burnt grass. Does it look like freshly burnt or? It's been burnt or, very or... recently. And it's, it's not. Actually, when you get closer, you realize it's not burnt. It's just completely decomposed. Like mm. it's, it's, everything's just been drained out of it. Anybody know what this means? Can uh, can Nova use acute senses? Take a look at it. See Absolutely. if she can find something else about it. Absolutely. All right. Time to roll. So while they're going up to look at that, um, Lars is going to be crouching low in the grass and circling around towards the cars. Mm -hmm. um, That's with their composure. Yes. Okay. They're... Oh, sorry. I'll wait. Two. Two. You're going up to check out this grass, and um, you see that it's actually not, like, flat the way this has been, this has been done. It's been done in a sphere. So some of the grass is, like, cut off. Um, like not all the grass has been decomposed or burnt, but rather the tops of it. And you can see there's been something that just like a sphere has completely enveloped some parts of the grass. Uh, you can tell that this is, there's a faint residue of something fey here. You can't quite place what it is. But this was not done by something of this world. And Lars, you walk over to the cars. And you also see that there's some burnt grass over here as well. But the cars, parts of the, the, the steel uh, has been corroded a lot more than the rest of it. Almost... Probably like something similar had happened here, but obviously it takes much longer for for steel to break down like like the grass would have done. But you can see like the the plastic of the steering wheel is kind of uh, brittle and very very dry. It almost breaks when you touch it, and the 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 already very worn fabric of the seat is kind of uh, just uh, rotted away. But there's no sign of any dragon. We need to be alert. It's probably nearby. Yeah, something definitely happened here because this is weird. We used to come here all the time, and yeah, it can decompose, but this is... Why would this part decompose more? Silas um, takes a quick look over the grass and the steel trying to see if any of this looks like the creature he was familiar with and the kind of damage he would leave behind. You never went to the mortal realm, so to speak, with your mount. Uh, so you can't say for sure. Like, it never it never did anything like this. Uh, you can't tell. It could breathe fire, for sure. It rarely did because it it's... It, it, was draining on it 
but that would never be done in a way like this. So you can't really tell. Your dragon wall also wasn't the largest kind of creature, so you're not entirely sure. I mean, it, it was it was fairly big, but it wasn't you know humongous. So it's possible it could have done this kind of damage. You, you're you're not sure. It's not something you recognize from from your time in Arcadia. Silas, while you're over here, climb up on top of this car and hold me up. Let's see if there's more. Certainly. Silas bends down and scoops the changeling up in his hands almost effortlessly, clambering on top of the car with his great legs and then holding him very high in the air. He's above, I'd say, a good 12, 13 feet off the ground at this point. It's a good, nice elevated position if you can manage it. Yeah, so Lars is kind of looking. There's a spot out in the center, and then there's a spot here. Is there, like, a trail of these or something? That's exactly what it is. It's not a straight trail, but because at some points, you see, whatever did this had been staying in roughly the same area. So you see these sphere-like or... Uh, uh, hemisphere-like burns into patches of grass here, here, here's it's been three sort of interconnected uh, hemispheres like it's been moving around a little bit and it's heading towards a very large, very old looking oak. It's the old oak, some of you recognize it, especially those of you who have been in Little Brook more recently. It's one of the oldest trees in the forest and also one of the few oaks this far up north. And it has this big hollow in it that kids sometimes would go inside of. It's like a hollow tree. And um, it's heading that way. Okay, Maybe so now, that I know, now that I know what the tracks look like, uh, can I make a roll to try and track the creature? Uh, yes, let's hear everyone what everyone was doing before we start doing the rolls, though. Uh, I know Nate was saying something as well. Nothing important. Okay, okay. Was someone else... Uh, I was just saying okay. that I would point that out to everybody yeah. else. Okay. That is moving that way, Perfect. it seems. So, Silas, go ahead and roll your tracking. And you get the bonus because you're obviously tracking a creature from Arcadia. Okay. I'm going to use my uh, Hunter Heart Kith uh, to use survival mm -hmm. as my skill for tracking. What uh, attribute should I use? For that? That's good. It's survival, I would say. I would say wits. There's no perception anymore, correct? It's, nope. uh, no. Yeah, I, can, I see. I see. Okay, yeah. thanks. Uh, let me just get my dice roller app mm -hmm. open. And Bionics Path Publishing, it's really great. Oh. Uh, Man, so, I yeah. I should have about, let's see, seven uh, dice to roll here. Mm. And. Okay, four successes. Great. Four so successes. Uh, that should be an exceptional success for mm -hmm. the tracking of the creature. Yeah. You can recognize from this pattern of movement, you spot some of it as well, and especially when Lars points it out to you, that um, your prey, your dragon, it seems to move slightly erratic. It's not, uh, it's not movement with a purpose, except after the, um, the three interconnected uh, hemispheres at which point it's heading straight towards the tree and you're almost positive that it stops there the creature your dragon uh, your prey has not moved further than that so maybe there's something up at the tree but you're sure it's a dragon perhaps you spot some telltale signs of how it used to move or things like that, the distance between the movements, but you're certain it is your prey. And uh, you have a pretty good idea that it's hiding around or in the tree. It's strange because a tree shouldn't be that big to hide a dragon, but that's where it is. I tell that to the rest of the party. I tell them that I know where the dragon is. I can tell them it's definitely up in that tree and that it was confused and searching for something, but now it's not. So use all the caution you have, because this is going to be a fight that's going to come very soon. 
I can move relatively unseen if I wish. Should I go and take a look beforehand, or or do we wish to go all together there? Some recon sounds like a good idea, I'd say. Um, maybe we should form a perimeter so it doesn't slink off. Well, while you do that, um, I'm, Lars starts to tear into the cars with his toolkit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, Lars, you are creating something, isn't that isn't that right? Do you want to wait until the proper proper dramatic moment to re reveal what you're making? Yes. Okay. Really. <laughs> so, who is going up to the tree? Is it? Jonas? I I um. How, it's still light out, right? It's still light out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll uh, activate my contract light shy. Mm -hmm. um for for a glamour which makes me invisible okay perfect is everyone keeping track of your glamour by the way yes good yes yes we should probably at some point also reveal our ambitions to the audience because i realize we haven't um or not ambitions our aspirations but we'll do that at a later point when it's dramatically appropriate and not in the middle of the story so, uh, Lars, no, sorry, Jonas, you're approaching the tree, and Light yeah. Shy does what exactly? I'll, I'll find it and and read it, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but but invisibility basically. Right. So you're heading towards the tree, and I'm going to assume it gives you a bonus to your stealth roll. Uh, that seems to be the most suitable. Is it? Um, it should be. To do light shy. It's not a shield, right? It's jewels. It's jewels. Perfect. Um, do, 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 do. The changely becomes invisible to the mind, affecting mm -hmm. all senses. Uh, the recording technology still detects her, but not for darklings. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get detected by recordings either. Okay. Very nice. Uh, da, 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 da. So they can't see or hear or... And it ends if you take an aggressive action. Mm. Or inflict yeah. any kind of harm or supernatural effect on anyone. All right, so Jonas just vanishes. No sign, mm. no trace of him. I get a little nervous. I, um, I try to... I um, uncap, I think, my box water bottle that I have with me because I've been collecting them at this point I think I take a water bottle and I try to I do I outline the I make a little trick I make it like, like an outline the outline of the sword uh, in with I dip my finger then draw an outline of the sword in front of me and like freeze it as I go mm -hmm. and then quickly before it falls down I grab the handle and pull an elemental weapon out of it. It's very similar to what I already did in the hedge. You've seen this before. Mm. And I just grab it and like stay very nervously mm. watching where Jonas disappeared. That's really cool. I say just like checking the chamber on my gun. <laughs> did you create yeah. a new gun? <laughs> no, it's the same one. All right. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank no. you. Nova is looking for a live spider in the grass. A live spider? Hmm. Uh, live spider. Why don't you roll... Uh, is wits is similar to perception in this case, right? Or is it... Yeah. yeah I, I know in Vampire the Masquerade V5, it's wits awareness, but yeah. there's no awareness here. I'm going to say wits survival? Or animal wits. ken, maybe. Wits animal ken. <laughs> That seems, okay. That seems reasonable. Or survival, whichever one is highest, I guess. I'll take survival. All right. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, th three. Three successes. Uh, eight difficulty? Hmm? At, at eight difficulty? Yes. That's really good. All right, so, yeah. uh, Nova, you <laughs> kind of just start crawling through the uh, knee tall grass, and soon enough, you find a spider just hanging out there, chilling in his web. I just uh, 
I just I kind of sco- scoop it up and just kind of keep it in my hand. I'm trying to be casual about this, but they're probably watching. Yeah. I just kind of hold it down and look back at everyone getting their weapons. The spider kind of frees out a little bit, but uh, you, you got him. Um, okay. He's in your hands. Now, remind me, who has the frozen sword? <laughs> that would be Kitsu or Tide. Okay, Tide. I have the sword, yeah. Yeah, sorry. There's a Victor butt in this game, honey. You can't even see your camera anymore. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> oh my god. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. What did you say? See, he. Yeah? I have a plan. If we can get okay. that thing's attention once it's out. I think I might be able to paralyze it. If that makes any sense. How so? What do you want me to do? When it's paralyzed, when it's focused on me. Take that sword, get in close, and kill it, if you can. That's assuming the paralysis works. If it doesn't, then keep your distance. Okay. I'm going to need more water, though. Are we are going to try to get it here? Yeah, the, the cold clearing? iron sword, right? You have the cold iron sword. Uh, yes, I believe so. If we can get you it into the... Take that one? Well... That'll kill it, right? Does anybody okay. else have skill with a sword? Weaponry because, is a skill, yeah. yeah. Because Tide has her own sword. Let's give that sword to someone else that has the ability to use it and double our That's a good call. offense. Yeah. Um, Nova. Or Nova, do you have skill? Are you, do you know what you're doing with one of these things? Uh, no. Okay. It, it's fine. I can do it. I take out All this. Right. I'll I'll grab the the. Who was carrying the? Was it in one of the backpacks? The the. It case? Be, no, it, I it had the case. Yeah, it had a case for it. You were. I had a case. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So you're Victor dual wielding. Honey. Okay, no, I don't know. I don't know if I can do a little, but I can do this, and I like unclick the the case. I put it on the floor in the grass, away from the disintegrated part. It looks weird. Just open the case, and like I take out the sword, wincing a little bit because I I still have my own in my own mm-hmm. in my hand, but I grab the other one and like stab it behind the car, and I go like I. It hurts me if I hold it in my hand, mm-hmm. but I can go grab it. So yeah. we need to we need to uh, usher the 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 dragon close onto the clearing so that when I know I can make a proper uh, I can dismiss the sword anytime. This is not a problem. I can also summon it again if I need to, but All I right. can't be holding this one for a very long time. It hurts me. There is no way to. Right? That's what you said last time. It hurts uh, holding it. Not to the point where it damages you, but it's, it, it tingles to the... that Your hand kind of almost falls asleep when you hold it. And it... Um, it is... If you touch the cold iron itself, that kind of stings. It's like touching something so cold that it burns. But... Um, you could you could hold it and you're for a while you use it, but your hand is gonna go numb after a while. You think? Okay. Um, another question. Mm-hmm. I I no, wait wait a second. I grabbed the the um, backpack and tried to dig in through. We didn't get gloves or any of any kind, did we? No. Okay. Okay. No Nobody gloves. Okay. Stuffed animal. I know, but Lars, is there any kind of rubber or something that you in the car that you can give me? I'll just wrap it around my hand and see if that kind of isolates it. It's isolates it. I can't talk. Um, I can tear off some of the seat cover. Okay, let's do that. Let's try. It's not gonna help, but maybe I can hold it for longer then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that works actually. It lessens the effect for sure. 
but you can still kind of feel it radiating. It's not gonna gonna hurt you, but it's certainly not a pleasant feeling, despite all this. But your hand is fine now. It's not gonna go numb. Okay, I have the the thing wrapped around my hand, but I'm mm. grabbing my own mm. sword and I'm standing next to the other one, so mm. that I can grab it if I need to. Okay, so how are you gonna do this paralyzing thing? Well, actually, you don't have to tell me. Just yell when it's done. It doesn't uh, matter. Yep. I if you tell me too many things, I can't focus. All right, I'll I'll be I'll signal you. Okay. So you need a a a, a distract to something to get its attention, so it comes I out. I just needed to look at me for even only a moment. Um, I can I can get up a tree, I can get up high, and I could be very distracting. That'll no, no, no. Edge. It needs to be focused on me. Okay. A distraction would have needs the to draw it out. Oh, to draw it out? Yeah, we do want to draw it out. Draw it out into the clearing, right? Mm -hmm. Is that yes. what you mean, Nova? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can get, I can go in one of the last trees and be up high and get its attention and then hopefully go low and then you guys get its attention. All right. I like the sound of that. Silas? Is Silas still here? Yes, he is, right? Yes, I am. Can you just put the water containers here by the sword and just encap them? It should be fine, I think. That sounds logical. I okay. shrug the huge uh, backpack off of my back, uh, take the water containers out, and stack them neat neatly next to the sword. That's so very nice stacking. Thanks. Question. So where mm -hmm. our plan is to get the creature to the clearing so that they can look into the eye and paralyze it somehow. I mean, it doesn't have to look me in the eye. It just has to look at me. I think it can help that happen. Silas says with more confidence than he normally does. I have a good bit of experience tracking creatures like this. I, if we can get it to look at me, I can get it to freeze. And after that, you can do whatever it takes to make sure the paralysis lasts. All right. Oh, oh good. Then Silas should be um, at the bottom of the tree. And I'll get the attention. And I'll climb down. I will hide behind Silas. That makes sense. I'll, yes. I'll, stick, I'll stick with Nate so that whatever he needs to do can be done relatively quickly. Okay, let's do it. Okay, but get get Jonas out of harm's way before you do anything. Oh, yeah. Because he says he's not. He said he's not really good at fighting. Jonas, meanwhile, you have. Or, or are you done planning? The rest of you. Yeah, I, I think so. All right. There's no problem. This is perfect plan. Yes. It's gonna work perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Jonas, you're heading up Long. to the uh, old oak. The big oak. And as you approach it, you uh, you feel that same kind of pressure in the air you felt before. But it's much more intense around here. And um, as you get closer to the oak, your vision kind of shifts a little bit. And you take another step and it shifts again. And you realize suddenly that the uh, hollowed out oak, it's very, very dark in there. And as you get even closer, you realize that it's dark because it's a tunnel leading down. And there are steps going down. There's carved out stone steps in the ground. It shouldn't work like this because it's an oak. It doesn't have that much depth. But as you as you are standing outside of the, the entrance, this is at least 10 feet wide. And it's just this passageway going down into the ground. And you're hit by this extremely cold wind coming out of it. I, I go. I, I'll, I'll take like a deep peek into the the darkness. Just put put my hoodie up and. Uh, huddle to huddle uh, a bit and then just take a step in 
to the into the down the steps. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you step onto the step, um, you're almost assaulted by. Well, it's hard to describe it, but it's it's like you're being wrapped up in this darkness, like it's embracing you, and it's so so cold. Uh, your your breath is not coming out. It's not physically cold. It's cold in your soul, and. Um, you you look around you and it's like the it's like you've taken one step down but looking behind you it's like you've walked for minutes down this path i did like do i see the the entrance far behind me is that is that what is yes yes you see the entrance but it it, it looks very far away. Do, do I see like anything ahead or is it like total darkness or do I see like a little area around me? You or... see the next uh, three steps, but the rest is darkness. The steps are white, they're pure white now. And you, uh, you feel like, you feel like this could, this, this darkness, it's, it's not trying to take you over or hurt you. It's almost like it's, it, it's pulled towards you because of what you are, of who you are. And it would be so easy to take this darkness and just use it. And you would be so strong. You would be able to do anything you wanted with this. You could take over Lilbrook. You can, you can fight back against a beautiful face. You can, you can make Alice in yours again. Anything you want with this darkness. It's all yours. It's your slave. I uh, hesitate for a while when I when I feel that. And then I also remember like this this promises has been made to me before. I'm 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 gonna like keep my my sen I will not discard the possibility of like grabbing out and taking at this darkness but i'll i'll keep going for a while longer you would be in control of everything for once jonas it would be your show you can make allison love you you can make her forget about the divorce you could destroy your fetch or or send it loose anything you're more powerful than you were you just don't realize it I, I'm I'm gonna roll a resolve for me here. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. go right ahead. <laughs> Good thing I didn't go in there. <laughs> I um. I'll I'll keep going. Okay. I'll keep going, but resist it barely. So you keep going down, and. Yeah. As you resist it, as you will yourself not to succumb to this lure, it's almost like it gives up. It pulls away and you see the cave walls around you and it's, it's polished stone all around you. It's white. It's just suddenly there's the darkness is no longer there, if it even ever was. And you see this room further down. And it's not even that far away. You look behind you and the entrance is just behind you. The steps are just a few. It's like a dozen steps down. And in this chamber, you see uh, a faint light. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, like an olivish green almost. Like a, like a green light. It's, it's strange, but you, when you enter it, you're in this this chamber that's uh, it's full of old machinery, like nothing you've ever seen before. It's like the entire room is this huge engine. There's uh, 
valves and gauges and buttons and levers and pipes oh so many pipes there's uh displays there's uh all kinds of machinery and it's all covered in cobwebs and it's so cold in here and nothing is moving nothing is turned on and you see three entrances uh, one on one on the left one on the right and one in the middle the one on the left is has this orange kind of glow to it the one in the middle is yellow and the one on the right is green and the yellow one you realize the the, the entrance is collapsed it's broken as if something has torn down the the walls of this tunnel so you can't go through it i i go to the to the i'll i'll just like are there are there like are they archways or are there closed doors there are archways leading into tunnels pathways there's no there's no door on them it just has this faint kind of glow coming from it mm -hmm. uh, i'll go first then to the the collapsed mm -hmm. uh, entrance and just feel if the collapse is real like just feel the the rocks try to like carefully silently lift one see if they like it's is it really... very real and not only mm. that you sense with utmost certainty that this is where the dragon went through through the collapse through the collapsed entrance yes meanwhile outside of this room outside in the field mm. it's it's getting a bit quiet. There's no bird song at all. And you realize that the ground is shaking. It's shaking uh, quite guys. a lot. The car is vibrating as we speak. I, I have acute senses. Would it be yes. possible for me to use them to try to figure out which direction the sound's coming from Th those those of you who have acute senses i believe that's both you and uh nova you don't need to you don't really need to do much to realize it's coming from beneath you there's something approaching very rapidly from underneath you nova starts like backing up away from it as quick as possible yeah, we need to get moving yeah it is shaking like pebbles on the ground are like jumping and skipping around and it's hard to even stay standing <laughs> Silas, so, so take the plan. water, please. I'll dispel my uh, my own sword and grab the other one. Okay. And grab the case with the I other just, hand. Go, go, and go, 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 who, who, who does something before they get out of there? That's tied. Is anyone else doing something before they get out of there? Um, Lars, you just finished your device. Are you bringing it with you? Yes. Okay. And, Anybody need a gun? I probably won't need it. Nate's Nate's getting out of there. Silas, are you getting out of there right right away? Of uh, yeah, I'm just gonna follow Tide's orders to get the right. gear and then okay. leave. Okay. All right. So I want Tide and Lars to roll. Let me see here. Dexterity, athletics. I guess would be the the good roll. Oh boy. Dexterity, athletics. That's the one. Uh, okay. <laughs> See how this goes. You sound, uh, uh, you sound concerned. Not with very. That's like four things. No, with dexterity, athletics, five. I lied. Okay. And anything eight plus is a success. One success. One success. Uh, two successes, but one is a ten. So I reroll that, right? That is correct. Yes. No, just two successes. Okay, two successes. So, what happens is that Silas, Nova, and Nate, you just get the hell out of Dodge as you move, and you see the ground actually starting to crack up beneath you, and you kind of throw yourself away from it. Uh, Lars and Tide, you see this as well, but you have to get these things away. You, you need the sword, and you certainly need the whatever thing that Lars has devised. And as you throw yourself out of the way, you are just shy of getting out of this. And you feel the ground crumble under your feet. Tide, you manage to grab hold of the edge. 
Lars, you are falling, and you are falling onto something very, very big, v purple, and is roaring so loud that you can't hear yourself thinking. You take... <gasps> Two points of damage as you okay. roll and batter against the body of the dragon, which its maw is big enough to swallow Silas whole right now. Oh, jeez. It's much bigger. Much bigger than it used to be. And it's just breaking out of the ground, flexing its massive wings, and it just flies up into the sky makes a loop and just hovers, flapping his wings so hard that the trees are bending and that the wind is making it hard to even stand straight. And it's looking it down looking at, at you. What? Who's it looking at? It is looking at... It's looking at... Um, it's looking at Tide, who's dangling <laughs> from the edge. <laughs> Lars, before anything else, I want you to roll another Dex Athletics check, please. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, and Jonas, well, you feel this vibration, by the way, in the ground. Do I uh, right, realize what's going on? You might. Zero? From Zero Lars? successes. Zero successes from Lars. All right, so... You take another whooping one point of damage, Lucky, as you kind of get hooked in the tail of the uh, of the dragon. You're hanging from the item you created right now as you're in the sky and uh, you are possibly at least 30 feet off, 30 feet off the ground right now. Hanging on to okay. it, and um, that's where you are right now. And Silas, you feel something in your head, and it is well, you've felt something similar to it before, but never on this scale. It's, it's like it's, it's laughing. It's like, <laughs> I feel what is laughing at me? The dragon is. It sense its power, and is the ground crumbling underneath my feet? You've managed to make it away from it. Just make you're standing it away. at the edge of this pit, deep, deep, deep underground. Okay, I wrap tide and get her off. i get right. her prevented from falling. More so. Delicious, you hear in your mind as the dragon is oh. looking at Tide. I'm gonna sort. Of, I'm gonna yell at the dragon. Hey, dickhead! It its head sw swivels. It Boom, sees paralyzing Nate, presence, and everyone that hears is... it. Goes revenge. Yeah, I'm hitting him with paralyzing presence, which is a contested roll. He has to make a composure plus weird roll. Oh. And I have to make a presence plus intimidation plus weird roll. A composure plus weird, you say? Yes. All right. Go, go, <laughs> Um, It is... For me, that is... Um, that's nine dice. Using the Onyx Path dice rolling app. Uh, that is one success. What? A nine? Oh. A single one? Well, two successes, one one, so... Yep. Can't you use willpower to... Can't you not do that in this game? <laughs> one doesn't uh, cancel out. Oh, okay, things, so then it's no, two successes. It's... Willpower, and one... Uh, let's see, what can I do with willpower in That's this situation? That's a good situation? question. Three extra <laughs> dice. You can re-roll three yeah. dice. Yeah. Oh, three dice? Brilliant. I'll do that. I would say I this is a perfect opportunity to do that. Desperately. All right, that's... Mm, two more successes. 
That's very good because I rolled three successes and you got four, right? Hey! Well, the dragon, <laughs> the dragon is staring is at you. Frozen in place. In so the air. It stops he sees this, its just... wings. Does it fall? I suppose. <laughs> Lars, <laughs> you feel. Uh, this, yeah. uh, it's thankfully not over the hole in the ground. But yeah. suddenly you're falling and you have a massive, massive dragon over you. On top of me. On top of you. You have. Ooh, in there. I'm going to give you another roll oh. of Dexterity Athletics mm. to get out of the way of this fall. Oh my goodness. And how long does this paralyze last? Until it gets damaged or. Um, there is absolutely no no note on that whatsoever. All oh, contracts s- last a scene, if nothing uh, otherwise. But yeah. I think like it gets that in, the insensate um, condition. Yeah. Probably. I know what insensate uh, does, and it lasts for the scene. But if it takes any damage, insensate is immediately resolved. Does that mean mm. it's going to take damage once it hits the floor, the ground? Hopefully, if it's on it the is... ground, you'll have time to stab it still. The victim can spend a point of willpower before then to act normally for one turn. A successful attack will also end the tilt. A successful attack? I don't think falling to the ground would count as that. Yeah, it's not an attack. Perfect. Okay. So what, how many successes, Lars? Three. Three. Lars... How much do you like the thing you just created? I let go of it. You let go of it. Perfect. Because My life that, is thing, that thing, your, do you want to describe what it was? Well, it was almost looked like a combination of a unicycle and an old style Gatling gun. Mm-hmm. I love that. Uh, only it was oh. a crossbow made with the leaf springs from the cars. Mm. It was a beautiful device created to fight a dragon. Unfortunately, it is now being crushed by a dragon. But Sorry. you make it out of the way. You you kind of throw yourself off when there's a few feet left and you roll on the ground and you just scamper with your arms and legs like a chimpanzee almost, You're just throwing yourself and the tail just slams down right next to you and the body kind of rolls over and the wing misses you by a hair's width and you make it out of there the 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 dust thrown up from this is just it's covering the air and the dragon actually starts collapsing on itself like it starts breaking down the scales kind of flake away and turns dark gray right before your eyes and i get in there you get in there. What do you do? do Actually, do should, we roll, I, should we roll initiative? I think this should Probably. Be, yeah. I think yeah. that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So, uh... How, how do you roll initiative? So, initiative... So, what do we roll? A 1d10 and add our mod? Yes. That's, that's okay. the way to do it. Which... What are we adding? Should be the mod. Right. You should have an Order. initiative modifier, yeah. yeah. It's in the bottom. Oh, right I here. see it now. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Lars has an 11. It's very high. 13 for Nate. 13 and higher. Silas is a... Silas is what? Silas is a 12. 12, uh, so... 9 yeah. plus initiative mod 3. All right, and 9 for Nova, correct? Yeah. And yep. how much for... Well, for Jonas, if well, for that's Jonas. important. It, 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 for... Yeah. And for Tide. For... 14. 14, so Tide goes first. All right. Tide, what do you do? <laughs> the dragon is decomposing before your eyes. Like, it, it's... How, how far away is it? It's on the other side of this pit, which I would say is roughly... Oh, I'm so bad with feet, but I would say it's roughly 50 feet across. Okay. 50 feet, yeah. The cars are gone. How... That That's sad. But, okay, how... Can I pull myself up? 
and you've been pulled up run... by Silas. You've been pulled up by Silas. I, I, okay, thank you. <laughs> I start running around the pit, I suppose. Would I be able to make it to any part of the dragon by that um, point? Or? You can run there, but you will not make it to the dragon this turn. Okay, well, I start. Mm -hmm. okay. well, whatever you did, good job. I, I think that's the paralyzed. <laughs> Keep going. That, yep. <laughs> With the Brilliant. sword. Like, Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. 13 was Nate, right? Mm hmm. Hmm? Yeah, that's me. Yep. I'm keeping that thing paralyzed. You can't actually make eye contact anymore. It's lying on its back, and the head it's, is. Yeah, it just needed to make attention, make contact with me that one time. I oh. paralyze it. I just need to keep him. I just need to keep focused on getting him down. All right. So is that another so, roll or? I don't believe so. But if you'd like it to be that way, we can just uh, like keep it interesting. No. No. Okay. Um, it's still. Oh yeah, it's definitely still paralyzed. So you're making your way over to it, or are you just are you standing up? Um, I'm just gonna make sure that it stays paralyzed. I don't mm -hmm. really have an because I don't want to make an attack against it, right? So. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, good. Then we go to twelve, which I believe is Jonas as well as Silas. We'll start with Silas. You said the dragon was decomposing. Does that mean it, it's dying? It's or? like it's it's breaking down. The body is turning into these flakes that are just like drifting away into the air. And those of you with senses that would recognize glamour, things like that, it's like a it's like a spectrum of color. It's it's leaking glamour out, and it's so tangible you can taste it. And it's it's not a nice taste. It's metallic, blood like, but it looks like it's dying. To be honest, this giant body is just breaking down. Can I use uh, shared burden to heal the dragon so it doesn't die? You could do that, but as you, but you can roll. <laughs> you can roll. What would be a good roll for sensing that? Occult wits. Wits occult, I believe. If you have that. Okay, give me a second. Mm -hmm. I have four dice and wits of cult. Let's see if I get a... Oh, that's one success. Oh. You... Mm, you... You're not sure the dragon is dying, actually. Now that you're looking at it. Because there's something else. Like, you still sense your mount you st you sense its presence but the body is decomposing it's very strange but it's not dying per se it's not like fading away oh it's just losing uh its current form could be okay um well i should be i think i'm well above the ground right now mm -hmm. so i'm going to climb down after the dragon and try to get next to it it even though you pulled tight out of the hole, so I did. Me, you have to run over. You're you're standing on the other end of the hole right now. Um, the hole is is uh, it's a fifty feet d diameter uh, pit, and on the other end of it, you see the dragon. So you could technically, I think you can jump across with your seven league uh, jump, but running to the other side would take you an entire turn. I'm going to I'm going to spend one glamour and mm -hmm. jump across. So right. I'm. You go soaring through the air, right away. Same way uh, the Jonas saw Amanda do it. There's there's no superhero effect. It's just woof. You go flying off, and uh, you land. Would you land on the dragon or right next to it? Right next to it. Right. I'm not trying to damage it or mm -hmm. your killer. Mm -hmm. That's your turn, correct? Yeah, I don't think I'd have... If I use uh, Glamour for a contract and try to recognize what's happening, I don't think I'd have space to do anything else. No, no, I think that's I think that's, uh, that's true. There's this imprint after your feet, though, like you oof, chucked yourself off the ground. Uh, Jonas, you're sensing that 
that was that felt like an earthquake right now outside you're not sure though um you're not sure where it came from i i i'm suspecting that like the dark dragon is on the move mm -hmm. uh i don't maybe it's out maybe i don't want to be this way but i'll, I'll take the the i'll just stop for a minute and then start running down the the green path the green path all right you start running down the green path um you the first thing that hits you is this overwhelming fear as soon as you step onto the green path into this tunnel it's it's crippling you 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 feel the fear of a child going to bed knowing that there is a thing underneath that bed just waiting for the light to go out to take them you feel the fear um of a woman who knows that the man sleeping next to her in the bed is not actually her husband but something else something weird and just waiting for the opportunity to uh to to get rid of her you feel the fear of old people as the winter comes approaching and they know they don't know if this is going to be the last winter of their life or not it's this overwhelming fear and amidst all this you feel your own fear as you were in that cave as you were walking down that path it's inhuman it's cold and it's gripping your heart And you see figures further down this path, just ghost-like figures. And they seem to be talking with each other, but you're too far away to hear what they're saying. I'm just stopping. Uh, I don't, I'm too afraid to move back and forward for now. Mm. And you hear one voice saying, the price is too high, Madeline. Who will be the sacrifice? And that's the end of your turn, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And we'll go yeah. to, uh, we'll go to Jill, um, Lars. You are right next to the dragon and uh, Silas has just landed a few feet away from you. Like sh all shaking the ground, but not quite to the same extent as the dragon just did. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am not sure um, what he would do, to be honest. Um, he'd kind of, to be honest, he'd kind of uh, put all of his eggs in one basket with his. I want, I want creation. to roll. Uh, um... You could roll uh, the uh, Wits Composure. That was the Perception roll, right? Wits Composure. Yeah, yeah roll Wits Composure. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six dice. Let me grab another one. Uh, and I have uh, zero successes. So he is just shaken by the fall, and he's going to get away from it and try to find somewhere mm -hmm. to hide. Mm -hmm. Even as you're moving, the tail, this massive fleshy dragon tail, is just scattering to ashes around you. And you catch a glint of something, well, a screaming cat in the background, but you also catch a glint of this purple, the same purple underneath what's decomposing. But you don't have the presence of mind to think much about it as you kind of run away. Do you round yeah. back to the others, or do you just run towards the oak which would be the opposite direction sorry i'm waving uh, at the camera all over the place but... um away from the dragon so there's two directions so, either around the hole or towards the oak where jonas went uh probably towards the oak then all right so you're running that way and last but not least nova what do you do okay so it's a. Uh... I um, it's a, across the hole for me. Mm -hmm. I, um, so it's you know I'm gonna I'm gonna take a second 
and see if I can figure out exactly what's what's going on here. What what this like? Either I can see where all the material's going. Can I see something under the material? You know, how dangerous is the situation right now? Um, this uh, material. Do you mean the decomposing dragon? Yeah, yeah, the stuff that's like flaking off. Yeah, that stuff seems to be harmless. But by this point, you're realizing that the uh, the dragon is very much still alive and kicking. It's just shedding. I guess you could say that. It, it's it's a smaller. It's molting. It's molting. I guess would be the appropriate term to say. And the 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 glamour is so thick. It's almost heady. Like you're getting a headache uh, from from the strength of, of this. Um, it's it's appealing to something inside of you that that like you just wanna you just wanna gobble it up. But it's also rancid at the same time. Um, so I, th I think uh, Nova is uh, possible like, head head towards the oak, which is away from the dragon, mm -hmm. and just kind of shouting, it, it's not down, we got to get out of here, get to the trees. Mm -hmm. And just as much right. uh, sp as, as much uh, distance as she can make. Mm. As you do that, and you start running, which is means you have to run past the dragon, because <laughs> you're on this, here's you, here's right. the hole, here's the dragon, here's the oak. So it's like a, a hill almost. And you start running. And at this point, Silas, you suddenly see this massive clawed arm coming towards you. It's not quite as big as it was, but it's certainly not as small as your dragon used to be. And it's just kind of trying to slam you away. And I am going to roll brawl dex brawl and i suppose you that's a contested roll correct yeah contested rolls for grapple should be yeah. done as strength. yeah all right i should have got okay that's an interesting roll go ahead and roll dex brawl Okay, I'm going to add uh, a specialty to this because I have mm -hmm. a specialty in grappling. Mm -hmm. But do you say dex and brawl or strength and brawl? Uh, no, that's a good question. It should probably be strength and brawl. Yeah, it is strength yeah, and yeah, brawl. Yeah. My book. But he's not trying to grapple you. He's trying to swipe you away. Like, it's not a grappling kind of move. So this yeah, I mean, but, but, I mean, unarmed... In this setting, mm -hmm. uh, unarmed attacks are resolved to strength and brawl. All so right, it's yeah. tested, I'll use that. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, Jonas. If it's just an attack, it's you. You roll and and ah. subtract his defense. Ah, okay. What's your What's your defense, um, Silas? You remove Thank you. that okay. number of yeah. dice before uh, you roll. I have three defense on mine. So. Okay. Okay. You um, you are not able to dodge then the attack from the dragon, and then it means I roll damage right, and I add bonus depending on how higher I am. The damage is the amount of successes you roll. Mm -hmm. Minus his defense or just the. Amount? So you you take the dice pool, remove the number of dice that is the defense, then mm -hmm. roll, and the amount of successes is the damage. Okay, thank you very much, and you get to add extra damage. If there's a weapon involved, right? Exactly. Okay. So, Silas, you take two damage as a, a claw the size of your forearm is just raking across your torso. You just barely managed to pull away or it would have gotten at your throat. Um, and you see this dragon is like crawling out of uh, the molted skin and tissue. Like it wasn't just the scales. It was actual flesh dissolving around it. And it looks uh, more bestial, like it, 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 it's, it has this fiery glow in its eyes and its jaws are just clenched and drooling and it's <laughs> like screaming at you. That's uh, lethal damage, right? Uh, mm, I would say so, yes. That's lethal okay. damage. That's, that's really bad news, Bears, for you. But you are, on the other hand, also a walking tank, so if anyone could take it, it would be you. And that's the end of this round. So we start again with Tide. Do we re-roll every turn? We don't, did I, right? Did I do anything that round? You did. You jumped across. Oh, nothing, yes, nothing. yes. 
So, Tide, what do you do? You you are getting close to the dragon. You could potentially attack it this turn if you wish. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just like mm -hmm. from the side, trying to flank it from the. I don't think I don't know if flanking is a thing, but I suppose uh, goes to the other like if if uh, they see that uh, they're getting like that um, Silas is getting like gets attacked on one end. Tide mm -hmm. go Tide goes to the completely other end. Like, All just right. tries to maneuver so it's across, okay. if they can make it that way. Yeah, sure. And then just kind of, like, grabs the, grabs the sword and just goes ham on it. I don't know. All right. Roll away with... Um, is that dex what weapons or is it still strength, rolling, strength oh weapons? Oh, my goodness. Weapon uh, sword is, like... Let me Usually see. strength. Uh, yes, yeah, strength uh, weaponry. Weaponry, okay, yeah, and I have a spe specialization in it, so it's you add a die extra yeah. die, yeah. okay. So, so roll I think I already did eight and plus, yeah, and then anything so weaponry and what else? Strength, strength, yeah, okay, and, and remove them the dragon's defense yes. from the dice pool. Um, oh, you, you do that before you roll for attacking, yeah, okay, you roll. so remove three dice, okay, that leaves. Uh, oh, this is an eight. Hold on. That, that leaves actually three. Okay. No, wait. Four, because I have the specialization, okay. I think. Roll four dice. Yeah. And, uh, I hope I hit. <laughs> this is the cold iron sword, so... Uh, one, two successes. Two successes. So that's two damage, plus the uh, bonus for the damage, correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the what, bonus for the sword, damage? I meant, not the damage. Um, yeah. Okay, I will not tell you how much damage that causes, though, <laughs> because that would be okay. spoiling. <laughs> so, the, the dragon but roars. But do I see any kind of effect Oh, yeah, on oh, it? yeah. You okay. chop away with the sword, which it, mm, it makes a sound. as It makes a sound like it's cutting through air, because it is cutting through glamour right now. And any of you who can sense glamour just see it goes <sighs> like a very sharp sh sword through a leaf. It just splits the glamour in the air. And mm. it cuts down onto a, the leg of the dragon. It just cuts deep into its flesh and it screams in pain. And you can, you can feel and smell the burning uh, flesh as the blade is just hurting the very soul of this creature. And it just turns its eyes and glares at you, Tide. <laughs> oh, it's talking! Oh my God. It looks at that dragon. <laughs> and uh, with that, it is going to be Nate's turn, I believe. Correct? Yes. 13. Okay. This is... I'm really bad at fighting. Um... I'm gonna shoot at the dragon. All right, you shoot your hand. <laughs> that's the best gun I can do. Dragon. That's that's fucking three dice or whatever. What what do I what am I using? I'm using dex. Uh, that that would be dex firearms, I believe. So then that's two dice. Okay. No successes. No successes. You shoot your and your a gun. one if that's a critical failure of some kind. Uh, we don't. I luckily I don't think there are critical failures in this. Oh no, hooray! You can fire. <laughs> You can choose to turn a failure into a critical failure exactly. to gain to gain a beat, though. Yes, you can do that. No, do that. You do that. Why not? All right. Okay, yeah, let's go. Okay, so what what would be the critical failure of someone shooting at a dragon that's currently fighting and engaged in battle with two of his friends? Either I nail a friend, so died. or I or the something goes horribly wrong with the gun and it. <laughs> Hand. I'm gonna roll. Oh uh, gosh! Don't shoot us. On, on even, it's gonna shoot one of your friends. Uneven <laughs> is going to blow up in your hand. Oh Jesus! <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Who is it gonna be? Oh no! Tied. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, that is going to be. I'm just gonna roll two dice. Tied. You get. Hit in the shoulder, it stings, 
and you you're not quite sure what just happened and you, you're bleeding <laughs> from your shoulder um and it hurts like hell i'm so Nate, sorry I'm going, I'm going to roll <laughs> this seems like a perfect time for me to roll fucking clarity damage fucking clarity damage you just shot your friend um so what would be the roll for that everyone help me out uh, here wait i had the rule book open uh, oh oh man i hope I'm that so was sorry. not my dominant and hand i'm also going to make a roll for clarity for tide because tide just oh, got shot by her friend oh their friend sorry um tide. okay let's see one die your total experience on real numbers i go but you said I don't know what happened. Oh, that's I don't true. know where that's that came true. from. Killing, so a, killing a human is four dice. Killing three dice is killing someone else's fetch. Nate. Yeah. You are a ferist. There is a yes. special clarity thing for you. I don't know if this oh, applies. No. But when you make a decision <laughs> that hurts one of your friends. Oh, no. Which just did. Yeah. Yep. I just did. In addition to your character's other breaking points, she risks clarity damage with the dice pool equal to half her weird, run it up, whenever her action or inaction leads directly to misfortune for her allies. So yeah, that That's would, one yeah. die total. Yeah, I'm gonna add one more die. Alright, yes. uh, you roll that or I roll that? I roll, I roll that. Okay, yep, go so, for it. No clarity damage. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you feel bad about this. Are you okay? Yeah, I feel really bad about it. Maybe oh. I shouldn't be... Playing around with this thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not like your friends or anything. <laughs> oh, jeez. Thanks! Sorry! Are you even going to acknowledge that you shot Tide, or are you going to be like, Yeah, uh, I am. Tide, someone just um, shot you. That's weird. I say, no, smoking sorry. gun in hand. Like, Whoa, sorry, sorry, me? Sorry, sorry. Just throwing yeah. away. <laughs> okay, um, I think, Nate, that's your turn. Yeah, that's my turn. Brilliant. You He's also get a He's been doing great with that gun so far. <laughs> Lots of good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm so good with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> giving Nate a gun? It's like giving a chimp a machine gun. Horrible idea. No, it's giving a Nate a machine gun. Giving <laughs> Nate a gun, yeah. Uzi is Take a beat, though, not Nate. One. You oh get experience God. points for hurting your friends. Good on but you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. I'm sorry, Tide. It was... It was a trade I couldn't pass up. Brilliant. Um, Silas. We'll talk about this. Silas, we'll about you, this. you're okay. bleeding from uh, your chest. In instant action, uh, I'm going to freeze the dra uh, freeze dragon. Freeze dragon? Uh, is he still insensate, by the way? I don't think so. He is He's not. No. no. Yeah. Well, I'm going to use the uh, Hunter Heart Kit. Uh, it's a an instant action to call, uh, spend a point of glamour to lock him in place for causing mm -hmm. the flea in terror. But I'm not going to cause him to flee. I'm going to try and lock him in yeah. place if it's possible. How so it's presence, presence oh, plus weird as an instant action. Mm -hmm. And I do I roll against that? Uh, you have to be roll composure plus supernatural tolerance, which is basically weird. Okay, gotcha. No, no, that is no success. Well, I got three successes here. Brilliant. How do you do this? Do you grab hold of something? Or are you just staring him in the eye? Staring him in the eye because I'm right next to him. Yeah. So uh, that's an instant action, so I can do something else as Brilliant. well. Yeah, he's not going as anywhere. His... As his body decomposes, I'm just going to lock him into a grapple mm -hmm. and just lock his neck and front arms together. Mm -hmm. He can't even resist it because uh, he can't take any actions until he breaks out with sensei. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say that you could probably not get both his front arm and a leg. He's still. I said, I said the neck. Oh, neck. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you're grappling. It is. You're big, so you manage to do it, but only barely. Like, this is still a very big creature. But he's kept in place, for sure. Okay, he's, he's so, grappled. He's, so he's locked. At the moment, yes. And, uh, of course... Should, oh, sorry? If he, if he tries to break out, I can... My unarmed attacks are going to be lethal damage. Uh, 
prey. That's a uh, that's a really good grip you got there. Yeah, Hunter Heart is an amazing kit, and particularly as a warden kind of uh, character, it's just downright lethal. Yeah, uh, for unarmed characters. Not going to make any comments about the uh, playtesting of this game, but uh, <laughs> sure. I, th I think the purpose is not um, battling so much. But um, yeah, well done. You got him locked down. The dragon is not going anywhere. Jonas, you are currently... Wait, uh, oh, sorry. I have a question. Yes. You never told me how much damage I got. Oh, no, you, you took one damage from, okay. the, from the shot. Okay. Shh. I mean, it's <laughs> a catch. Probably Flare. not just a scratch. Yeah. Keep it fair. It's a flash wound. Yeah, it is, but Keep a scratch. <laughs> sorry, go on. That's, that's all right. Oh, I was also going to roll. No, right, right. That's true. You didn't know who the the bullet came from. It was just like, oh. Mm -hmm. Although you would probably figure it out later on, so that might be a later. Just roll. waving and apologizing. <laughs> hey, sorry. I'll get him next time. <laughs> Uh, okay, sorry, go on. Okay, so, um, Jonas, you're currently, like, you don't know, like, going further into this tunnel is going to be testing your resolve right now. I'm going, I'm going to try something something weird here and see mm -hmm. if, it, if it works. Jonas, when he, he notices, like, the fear and he thinks back to that darkness that tried to test him earlier, mm -hmm. and he's like, no, no. I will pass here. I am the master of this place. And I will cast or use Hostile Takeover. Mm. Which, which gives what gives you what? It, it gives me, like, this place says, sees, sees me as its master. Mm -hmm. And all, like, traps and stuff are deactivated. If it is as, like, someone's hollow, which it mm -hmm. could be, I don't know, then it's a clash of wills. But, but every, all, like, doors open... Things we, goblins and hobgoblins get out of the way, uh, like that. I'm gonna it's say a... we're doing a clash of will. Hmm? So, uh, what is that? That's a willpower roll, or Ooh, I don't remember if it's weird or. Uh, I'm looking at it up right something. now. Give me just a second here. Yeah. Uh, does not work if the building's owner or main resident also knows hostile takeover. Uh, right. It doesn't work if the owner knows hostile takeover? Yeah. If the owner of the place knows hostile takeover, it doesn't work. Unfortunately, right, I guess you now know that the owner knows hostile takeover. <laughs> <laughs> which, means, which, which means you're not spending any glamour, though, and you can still do an action. You will instantly oh. be like, ah, mm, doesn't work. So you're still you free sure? to do an action. I, 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 uh, I think that would only be fair. Oh, yeah, yeah, you started no, weaving no, the contract, no, and it, the, 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 the spirits, the nature you've made the contract, it's like, uh-uh. And -uh. you go, oh, okay. <laughs> So I, I make this bold proclamation and notice that no one no one's listening. So, however, but... however, you feel emboldened by it. It's like you're motivating yourself. You feel like you can stand up now. It's still hard, but I I try to push forward. Mm -hmm. I'll. Um, you want me to roll a resolve? You can do that. Yes. Yeah. I'll 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 spend a point of willpower as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one success, yes. One success. You start making your way down this path, and you hear more voices. You hear the voice of Mrs. Blackbird saying, "No more losses, Matthew. We cannot allow more lives to be ruined by this keeper." And you hear Matthew as well. Speaking up, saying, someone has to stay, Mrs. Blackwood. We can't keep this up on our own. Someone needs to remain remain here. And Mrs. Blackwood says, I'll do it. I can't accept any more deaths. And then the man you heard before as well, the one you don't know whose voice it was, saying, No, Madeline, 
I can't lose you. I won't lose you. I'll do it. And you make your way through the tunnel. It's... You come out in the un another room. It's circular as well, like the others. And there is a raging river right cutting through this room. And it's going down another path. And you realize this this tunnel that the water is going through, it has this yellow glow in it, same as the as the passage you couldn't go through. And on the other side of this this room, circular room, there is a blue door, blue portal, sorry, a blue kind of glow. And that's all you get to do for your turn. Because we're going to go to Lars. Um, so Lars is kind of standing over by the old oak. Yeah. You're He's... also seeing this, this pathway down into it. Okay. But he's hearing the sounds of combat behind him. Yes. So he is going to turn, and he is completely unarmed. So he is looking for anything, really, because he can turn pretty much anything into a weapon. Mm -hmm. So he's just scanning the battlefield for anything that he can turn into a weapon. Uh, do you want another wits composure? Sure. The Kanokia phone and stick. <laughs> they say that works for Apocalypse. Oh, I dropped the ball. <laughs> <Sorry. Yeah. laughs> uh, it's like a brick you throw at him. And I reroll tens, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. You add an extra success to this. Uh, two successes. Two successes. You spot a claw lying bur half buried in the ground. Uh, the uh, the rotten remains of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, hand-like limb that was attached to it the claw itself yeah you could probably use that as a weapon i'm okay. not sure what you'd uh, be able to make of it but you might be able to think of something is there a like a, a branch or a stick or something laying oh yeah around? there's plenty of those around this claw is about the size of your arm by the way oh okay so he would rush forward um, grab the claw, and he's going to use uh, one of his shoelaces to mm. lash it to the stick to make it into a, a weapon. All right. Uh, roll to do that. Um, would that be dex and crafts, intelligence and crafts? Mm, I think it would be Dex and Craft because you got to make sure you can tie it Dex properly. Okay. So um, that's because it wouldn't take a genius to figure that out, but getting the proper knots and stuff in place and, and tightening okay. it. And this is considered jerry rigging. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have mm, nine dice. You're very good at this. Uh, one, two, three. Then I get to roll these three again. Four, five, five successes. You have <laughs> master crafted a uh, dragon talon axe, war axe. Well, nice. war spike club, but you get the point. This is a really good weapon you just made. And that's going to be your entire turn, but you can cause yes, some serious damage my, with this. That's my action, yeah. yeah. You're like that ape who just picked up a stick and started killing yeah. other apes with it. But this stick has a huge dr white dragon claw yeah. on it. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Nova, what are you doing? You're running towards the oak tree, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think she's still... They've got this. She, yeah. She's heard a gun. <laughs> there's, a, there's a weapon being left. There's nothing she can do. All right. Yeah, you, you make your way past the dragon. It's far too busy fighting the others to care about you running past. And you make your way up to uh, Lars just as he finishes his mighty war axe. That looks really cool. I'm going to hang out behind you. Uh, are you any good with weapons? No. Okay, then. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you fast? Uh, uh, I'm good at talking. Should I talk to him? I uh, I have a feeling we're past that. Yeah, then no. Okay. Yeah. 
brilliant. It's, it's really nice, though. You did a good job. You should feel proud. Thanks. I do. See, I'm good at talking. <laughs> All right. It's the, uh, it's the dragon's turn. <laughs> the dragon is um, trying to get out of the grip. It's not exactly the smartest. Uh, straw in the bunch, I was going to say, but that doesn't make any sense. But um, that would allow you to cause damage to it, correct? But do I... Silas, right? The thing is, uh, I didn't think it could take actions until uh -huh. the insensate tilt is resolved. Is it insensate again from the thing you did? Yeah, it is. All right. Um, no, it's not doing anything. It's kind of thrashing about and not really sure what to do. But I... Hmm. No one has caused any damage either since you did that. So exactly. exactly. So new round. Tide, what are you doing? Well, I haven't, I haven't uh, gone. Oh. Sorry? Did I go that round? Yeah, or was that yeah, some you action? Did. Yeah, the grappling you did this round. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um Do I Okay, so he's the, the dragon is being held still, correct? Mm -hmm. First of all, hold up. <laughs> the phone. First of all, I like I, I have this moment of I I'm bleeding. What just happened? I'm in it pain. Hurts. It hurts. It hurt. I'm, but I'm I'm like what? Like there's this, this feeling of disconnect for a moment, but Sorry. I'm really being high. Yeah. Yeah. I grab. Now my roll for clarity damage. You don't take any clarity damage. Okay. Yeah. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> right. My bad. Or maybe I just see Nate waving like. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Can I'm I, can sorry. I, I'm really sorry for cutting in. I will let you continue in a second. I just wanted to say yep. that since we're over time now, I know uh, Jonas or or Adam, if you need to go, we uh, that's okay uh, because it's late. Um, sorry for cutting in because we're over time. Yep. No problem. Okay. Maybe we can kill it fast. Hold on. Maybe. So I like. <laughs> I grab. I I still have the sword, right? And I just mm -hmm. since the dragon is prone, is it prone? Is that the? It is the... prone. I would say, isn't it? Can, yeah, it's prone. I... It's on the ground. Yep. Yeah. Can I try to like decapitate it or cut into its neck really deep? Yes, for sure. Uh, you could, although the neck is currently being grappled by Silas. Well, the neck, it's a dragon. I'm oh, sure it's true. Has, it's like, got a pretty long neck. Um, <laughs> long mm. neck. I can find the spot, I guess. Plenty of neck. Plenty of neck. All right. Then uh, I guess you're going to get some bonuses on that roll. Um, yes, please. <laughs> uh, I would say plus two dice to that. Seems reasonable, okay. right? Seems Attacking reasonable. a prone, immobilized prey. Yep. So that's six. Mm -hmm. Let's hope I do the thing. Okay. Oh, minus, minus. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I already did the minus. Okay. okay. One, two, three. Three successes. Ooh. You can re-roll three if you spend a willpower. Okay, I spend the willpower. Oh, shit, I'm going to be very low on willpower. <laughs> okay. Do it. One more success. Okay, so four successes. So four. Okay. Uh, you don't decapitate it, but the sword goes really deep into its neck, and it's kind of thrashing about. Uh, it's bleeding a lot, and you're kind of just swarm swamped in this thick miasma of glamour that's just leaking out of the wound, uh, and the body starts decomposing again as well, but a lot more this time, like the body's just breaking down. And Silas, your grip of the dragon kind of just goes loose as as, as it melts bet between your fingers. Uh, it is Nate's turn, and you're seeing this happen. I'm gonna rush over. Um, it'll, pro it'll take my whole turn to do that, but I'm gonna run over, because I'm not gonna shoot again. I'm not, no way. <laughs> I mean, listen, you, it went really badly once. There's, yeah. I don't think. Uh, I'm not going to risk it. it. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I will shoot it again. She has right. two shoulders. Two yeah. dice. She's fine. You got, this. you got this. Fucking, I'm using the Onyx Path app. That is two tens. So I can roll again and have more. 
Nice, nice. Uh, plus zero Please successes. So just two successes. You rolled it again? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, yeah, because we don't tend. Right, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So how many successes? Just two you... successes. Just two success successes. That is not enough to break through the defense of the dragon. I think it's a save when you shoot, right? No, you, you don't, don't use defense when mm. you when you get shot God, at because you can't things. really dodge it. Okay, so <laughs> it causes. So it just causes two damage. Yeah, even more if the gun gives uh, gives extra, yeah, plus, plus extra damage. That's that's a strange system. So the... Oh yeah, well you can't dodge a gun, I guess. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can have armor. <laughs> you can have body armor, though. That's true. You can yeah, dodge yeah. a wrench. You can dodge a <laughs> right. Uh, Nate, you shoot into the dragon, and by golly, you hit it. Um, it's it's screeching and thrashing about. It's about the same size as it was when you first entered Lilbrook. Actually, now mm -hmm. much more manageable size. Um, Silas, your turn. So I would have to try and re-grip it to grapple the drum. Mm -hmm. It's true. How badly is it? Just about dead, or hard to tell. Honestly, it looks like it's perfectly healthy. Like what's what's coming out of this molting looks unhurt. You'd say. Thinking, can I just automatically do? Uh the damage to it to try and up down or should I just keep it grappled? I'm wondering about that. Keep it steady. I'll get him next time. <laughs> if Nate doesn't kill <laughs> I'm sure he won't. You can shoot me some more, Nate. Uh, Nate, actually, because I have some more health. I'm okay. I'd rather seriously. not. I'd really <laughs> rather not. <laughs> Like, come at me, bro. <laughs> oh, seriously, Chris, is it, is it getting smaller or? What's it's getting it? smaller. It's getting smaller. Yes. It's uh, the the thing that's inside of it now, because it's molting again. It's breaking down. Is about the same size as it was when you entered Lilbrook. I see. So I can't successfully grapple like most you, of the dragon. You could try to grapple it again. That's what I'm going to do. Yes. And I roll less than a post check. I'm not going to be as good as I used to be. It's pretty hurt. Uh, da -da -do. That's one success for me. I'm probably going to get more than one success given. Uh, hold on a second. Just letting you the, the dice app roll open. Five successes. It's grappled. It's grappled. So um, the dragon just caught up again. It's like it's it's screeching and thrashing. Whatever intelligence it had, it's gone. This is a wild beast now. Uh, uh, can I communicate with it? Calm it down somehow? You could try. It's getting hit with cold iron. I, I, I don't think I, there's any... I try to remember uh, how I would pacify it before. When Usually by the... feeding it with the goblin creatures. Oh! It, Which is no longer it. available. Okay. Or choke it out until it faints. That, that, that works too. Yeah, I'm going to try choking it out. Yeah. Just like knocking it out. Alright. Cool beans. Jonas, I, I, I'll, I'll go through the blue archway. You have to cross this river. Oh, right I now. have to cross. There the is river. a okay. river going through. Uh, you're in a circular room, and on your on the right end of the circle, the water is coming in, and it's yeah. rushing. It's 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 a raging river. And you can't really tell how deep it is. It's about 10, no, it's about 15 feet wide. And it's just streaming to the left, which is this yellow tunnel. And across the river is a blue passageway. How, how far across is it, you said? Uh, 15 feet across. 
This is a okay. raging rip. It's like um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, mountainous kind of mountain stream. Oh, uh, like a crevasse. A what now? Like a crevasse. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's like it's um yeah, but I, I mean the 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 rapids. It's like it's like a rapid essentially. You're pretty sure you would not be able to swim across this. You'd yeah, be, you'd be dragged I... along. And and I I I try to like no I I guess there is no way across if you don't know um, I'll try to see if there there is like something in the room that that I could climb on or or anything and if I don't find it I'll I'll turn around and and go back run there, back. there's nothing in this this room now that you could mm. climb I I'll I'll run back to yeah. to the first chamber I came down to them to to take the yeah. other archway yeah. but but that will probably be yeah. you you, you head back through the green portal mm. which is not green anymore it's uh, no wait um sorry it's green you were going through i keep getting my colors mixed up um it's the color of the room that you left behind you basically there is not a single emotion or anything forced upon you when you're heading back it's like mm. you conquered this passageway so you start mm. heading back to the first room yeah. uh so we'll pick up there next time because we're gonna finish the whole thing with the dragon uh mm -hmm. Lars, what do you do? You have this giant dragon claw weapon. So, um I will run up to Silas mm -hmm. and I will hold it out to him and I'll say use this. Use its strength against itself. Mm -hmm. You, you, Silas, it's a free action if you want to take the weapon right now. I look hesitantly uh, at Lars, and I, I tell him, thank you for the offer. I'm better with my hands, and it's just about losing. <clears throat> try to keep it from... To try and still its struggle and try to render it unconscious in the way that I could have done before. Take the damn weapon. <laughs> Oops. Oh I reach it out. Me no good. <laughs> I explain as I just reach out for it. I hope this is a mystical thing because I can barely use these weapons. I say as I try to keep hold of the dragon. A little bit and more I, should do. And then the guy with one strength and one weaponry ones away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Perfect. Um, Nova. Your turn. Uh, everyone still seems to have it pretty on lock. <laughs> You're doing real good, Silas. Um, anything I can help you with? If you could keep its tail from hitting me, that would be ideal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. She's like she she can hold something. Or, or relax it somehow. I don't know. Uh, should I talk to it? Hey, dragon! It does not respond in nah. any means. It, nah, it hisses and spits and uh, is crushing nah. about. And, um... Wait, I'll, so, I'll so who, 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 are you standing by the dragon or did you stay over at the oak? Oh, I stayed over by the oak. I'm just okay. yelling. Okay. <laughs> I want a... Uh, I want a, the perception roll, which again is wits uh, resolve. No, uh, composure. Composure. Wits composure from uh, from Lars and from Silas and from Tide. Two successes. Wits and composure. Mm -hmm. uh. I am so frustrated with the cameras freezing all the time. I need to figure out how to fix that. Wait, a uh, question. Is mm -hmm. holistic awareness anything I can add to this? Or no? no, no, not to this. Okay. Point. Fair. Two? 
No, yeah, two. Okay, thank you. And Lars got two. All three of you realize that the dragon is getting very, very, very warm right now. And uh, Silas, you're the closest to the mouth. You know what's going on. It's, it's about to start breathing fire. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Yep. So I, I wrap my arms around its neck and try to grip its head to point mm -hmm. it well away from the party. You try to move its head away from the party. Uh, that will be a contested uh, strength brawl. This is where I shine. Uh, three successes. Ah, you manage to move its throat away <laughs> as it, this cloud of fire bursts out through its body. It's like... This is insane. I've got... Uh, huh. It's like a volcano blowing up into the air. Some pirate kinetics. Uh, what happened? What did, you, what did you say was insane? No, it's just uh, I thought I'd get a higher percentage of dice from that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, as this happened... Your grip is once again loosened as the dragon starts decomposing once again. Oh, no. And there's nothing purple. Well, there's no purple scales left. The body itself is just kind of rotting away. And you spot in the ashes this... It's about this size. Purple. I can't see it. Yeah, we can't see you. Oh, did my camera go off? No, I mean, oh, you're on Twitch. Oh, just... oh, sorry, you can't see me. It's about the size of a chicken's egg, slightly bigger. It's black and purple speckled. Okay. And it's very warm to the touch. Nice. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session, because we're a little bit over right. We'll be here over time, yeah. Sorry about that, Onyx Bath. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, you very much for playing, everyone. Sorry? Our Onyx Path audience got a lot of extra time tonight. So yeah. You, <laughs> uh, you guys dealt with the dragon way easier than I thought you would, but... So learning the ropes. That's this what is planning does. Yeah, no one it's, died. We are amazing. Yeah, you're amazing. Like no clarity damage still, even though oh, someone actually even though I shot. Fucking shot <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. I we'll talk about that. that. Yeah. Talk about that later. Thank you everyone for watching, and thank you my amazing players. We will be back again the twenty first, same time, same place. This episode will be up on YouTube in two weeks, one week for patrons. And if you're subscribed to the Onyx Path, you will be able to see it whenever you want. So subscribe, go uh, support the Kickstarter of Mummy Second Edition. It's going to be awesome. And thank you very much. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.